in order for Jim to not have been apprehended or questioned, being that he is on not a regular conversation wiretap, but he's on a Rico wiretap. You understand what I'm saying? This is a Rico wiretap. Jim Jones is his own man. And I'm getting, for one, I'm not, I'm not feeling, and I don't respect the fact that he had Mel call from jail. This man is in jail. He's in he yeah. federal custody. You have a call on the phone. Handle your own beef. You are, you a man. Use your right. voice. Peace. Well, I want to welcome y'all to an Info Minds Roundtable. We got the brother Snow Billy in the building, controversial figure. We got Poppy from Bronx River, a.k.a. Hassan Campbell in the building. But, um, yeah, we're going to get right into it, man. Tonight we got a New York-based roundtable. Now, last week we had the uh, we had the versus battle between the Lots and the Dipset. How did, how, how did y'all enjoy the battle and who do you think won? And let's start with you, Snow. I mean, um, hands down, you know, I got to definitely get that to the Lots. You know, the Lots tucked up by a long shot. As we all know, we all could agree with, you know, when it comes to that situation, um, definitely shouts to P out because he definitely um put the Frank stand on the map at the end of that thing. You know what I'm saying? That was a that was a good battle, you know, for overall. But um, they ain't really have no wins against the locks. And man, the locks have been groomed by some by some professional industries, you know. So they was able to get that um, they was able to do well on that. Guys, what you think, bro? I think um, <laughs> it's like taking a clean glass and putting it next to a dirty glass. When you actually listen to what dudes are saying, to as you know, you you got camera on talking about computers puting, stupid, stupid, and then you listen to the lyrical ability of the locks. It's like whoa, because at first I'm not going to even lie. I thought I'm like, yo, the locks got. I mean. Dipset got anthems. It's going to be a good one. Right. But then when you listen to the lyrics back to back, it's like, hold up. You know what it is? I think maybe some some songs stand, stand the test of time. You know what I'm saying? And some songs just sound a little bit outdated. So, you know, sometimes, you know, hey, man, hey, I, you know, now, I ain't trying to get, now, make you, the excuse for it, but hey, man, you know. Now, you know what it is? You know what yeah. I tell I tell dudes, right? Some dudes out there ain't never really had no good pussy. Some dudes never had no, and I tell like they didn't have some average bum ass chicks in the bedroom. The locks gave you that that roar, roar, roar. To as Dip said, it was like so when you when you when you get a real real bad shorty in the bedroom. To as these chicks, you done slept with twenty five chicks, and then you get this one chick that shows you. What being a grown woman is all about in that bedroom, and it's like, wow, now you got niggas committing suicide. The, the locks had niggas ready to commit suicide next to them dudes. They literally, they lit, yo, it, it was like, yo, it, 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 that was child abuse. What Jada Kiss did to them, because it was really Jada Kiss battling all of them by itself, it was child abuse. Facts, facts, man. People will yep. argue that. People will argue yep. that. But when do you enough. think the dip set went wrong, and what could they have done to win? Freaky Zeke was just taken away from their stage performance. It, he was irritating. Freaky Zeke was irritating. Just watching him up there doing that clown, and he looked at like he he was just he was just on some Queens flip shit. When you watch hip hop, yeah, you yeah. looking for you looking for the performances, the hype man's like he wasn't he he wasn't the, the hype man like when you watch Buster Rhymes on the stage, you see Spliff Star, like, he enhances the performance to whereas Freaky Zeke was taken away from that. Right. Definitely. And then, you know, even with Joel Santana, Joel Santana's nice. And he he, he got, you know, I would, even though he don't have hits, he still had dope songs on his album that I would have liked to hear him perform. Styles P had dope things that I think that he could have performed more. I don't think that, like, I really don't like the way the battle went down because there's more songs that I would have liked to hear from Jim Jones as well. It was just, you know, pretty much Cameron versus, it, it, them versus Jada, because there's more that I would have wanted to hear back and forth from both groups. But overall, it didn't even matter. Jada Kiss slaughtered them. 
Yeah, definitely. On top of the fact, we got to keep in mind that the DJ played music for an hour and a half before they even started battling. Yeah, so, it was late. Now, imagine if they would have had the full time. Imagine if motherfuckers was on time and they had the full, you know, whatever it was, 90 minutes, whatever it was, two hours to really rock out. They, they was an hour late. You know what I'm saying? So that could have swayed them a little bit, too. Maybe it would have gave them some more time. Or maybe that could have made it worse. You know, who yeah. knows? <laughs> learn your lyrics, man. Learn your lyrics, man. That's just like if you're going to school. You got to learn your books, man. Learn your lyrics, man. You got to learn your lyrics. You can't battle nothing if you don't know your lyrics. That's like going to a war with an empty gun. People seem to have a newfound respect for Jada. Now, is he definitely certified to be... You know, I mean, he already been top five. Right. But, but I would say he's, he's, he's solidified his spot. What you guys think? Well, 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 with Jada Kiss, you got to understand something, man. Jada Kiss gave birth. That nigga is the daddy. He is the father of Fabulous and Beanie Siegel. Whether niggas want to admit that or not, they whole style came from Jada Kiss. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Beanie and Fab that? came from Jada Kiss. Two birthed them niggas. Uh. Beanie and Styles is is that those are Jada Kiss Juniors. And shout out to both of them. I like both of them. But the reality of it is Beanie Style and, 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 and Fabulous Style. That's why Jada Kiss said in that song, niggas came through with, with his whole style and they made it. He was talking about both of them. Yeah, I, I probably can see that to a certain degree. To a certain degree. I, I mean, I, I haven't really never really listened to Fab. You know, I listen to Fab once in a while. But um, I haven't really never took a, a, a direct in tune into his music, you know what I mean? I couldn't really never get with it. Plus, when he came out, I think I was in the penitentiary at the time, and um, his music wasn't the tune in the penitentiary. So, you know, I don't really know his um. But Benny Siegel, Benny Siegel was hard, man. And um, I can see, I can see him and Kiss having that same kind of wave. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Beanie, if, if Beanie is in and, 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 and Kiss go at it. Now you now it's your, you're going to see a big difference because you're going to listen to both of them are equal when it comes to that 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 own that, 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 the lyrics. I don't know Beanie see after after Beanie um that gunshot you know what I'm saying he took with it losing his voice. I don't know if the jam's going to hit 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 the same. You know what I'm saying? So that's the only I make I think Beanie might be at a disadvantage when it comes to that because he he lost his voice so. His joints may not hit the same, you know what I'm saying? Jada, you know, he at the top of his game right now. He like what you would say, the best shape of, shape of his life when it comes to hip-hop, you know what I'm saying? That's right. It. Word. So, you know, I think there might be a little, it might be a little, Beanie might be at a disadvantage when it comes to that. Right now, Jada like the Ali out here. I don't think really nobody really fucking with him lyrically unless you start going way back to like niggas like Rakim. And, yeah. You, know you gotta what I mean? be on stage with Jada, man. You gotta, you gotta really be Lyrical equipped to really go on stage with that man, man. You got it. Now, me ask y'all this though: If there was any other group out there that could give the locks a run for their money, who would it be? And let's let's take it to Brooklyn first. Let's start with you, Snow. Go look at the house. I see you thinking. I see the wheels spinning over there, Hans. But go ahead, go ahead, Snow. I already got it. Group wise, group wise. Mm -hmm. I already got it. Right, thank you, group. Group wise, know what you got, man. Man, I'm um, and that's kind of hard. You saying the group like it ain't that many groups, man. I mean, you, say you got the locks, you're Brooklyn on that niggas like MOP. Yo, I, mean, you just said I mean, like, come on, like, what's going on here? Man. What are we doing out here? MOP, you just said that's what I was getting ready to say. MOP, <laughs> as a matter of fact, hold up. You ever you ever heard that song between um? Keeping it gangster, MOP, the locks, and old fabulous. Yeah, 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 MOP yeah, killed that. Yeah, course, they killed it. Yeah, now, yeah. I'll go back to how about some hardcore, man. You know what I mean? MOP yeah, I've been a fan. Let me tell you something. MOP versus the locks is going. That would that and see the problem. The thing about it is, is that you have to be MOP fans to know their songs because they was mainly un underground. True, true. true. But song for song. They gonna have a problem with MOP because MOP is hardcore. Right, but it ain't gonna be nothing but a bunch of Timberlands and hoodies in there for that one, man. <laughs> nah, but you know what though? MOP got MOP got some bangers, and that I would love to see that. 
So what we doing collectively? Who we saying we gonna put we putting MOP versus the lots? That we doing? Yeah, I gotta go with MOP on that. MOP. Right. I got my money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my money on the mash out, man. Let's do it, man. Let's see that. Yo, AO, AO Timberland, your Swiss. Put that play together, man. Bring yeah. the locks back, man. Bring the locks back, man. Bring them back with MOP. Meek Mills and Jada Kiss would be a nice one, too. Ah, Meek come on. Come on, Oz. Come on, Oz. Oz, you, you been outside today, Oz? I think you need to go get some air, man. Meek Mills and Jada Kiss, you got to understand. Meek got Jada style, too. Meek, Meek whole flow, his whole style is Jada Kiss. That's another one. Meek got some joints. I mean, that's, yeah, I ain't but, trying to take nothing from me, but I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. I ain't trying to take nothing from me, but I'm just saying. So you said <laughs> who? Huh? You said me go up against who? He said Jada. 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 Meek and Jada. Meek got some joints. Yeah, but he, yeah, but he, um, he, he can't hang with Jada. He can't hang with Jada. I think Meek, 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 Meek may need another five, maybe another five, ten years in the rap game. Right. Just circling right. back to some shit like that. Yeah, yeah, because. Man, I don't think he ready he gonna get right it, now. Go get emotional, man. <laughs> go get emotional, man. Now, look, let's get right to it, man. Now, the internet been buzzing the last couple of days, man. Um, now, over the past few weeks, excuse me, over the past few days, Wack and Jim Jones have been going back and forth on IG in the clubhouse. Now, it all started with Wack interviewed 6 9 and during the conversation, 6 9 said some things about Mel, said some things about Jim and others. Now, after phone conversation was leaked where Mel is talking about Wack, now, was Jim wrong in directing his anger at Wack? And should he have called Wack and had a conversation and told him how he felt about the situation before he um, responded the way he did? Just had a phone conversation with him man to man first. And the same thing for Wack. Do you think that Wack should have even entertained that part of the conversation once 6 9 took it there? Basically, they handled it the way they should have handled it. You know what I mean? They probably both had something to get off their chest. But as for... um. As for, you know, Jim Jones-wise, he should have spoke up for himself and I have an other entity to speak up for him. Yeah, Wack did an interview with 6 9 6 9 mentioned Jim. Okay. And he was insinuating about Jim cooperating right. and stuff like that. So instead of Wack, you know. All right. Stop right there, right? He didn't say a lot. He threw bits in there because Six nine set with the with the people. You understand what I'm saying? And he also knows that in order for Jim to not have been apprehended or questioned, being that he is on not a regular conversation wire tap, but he's on a Rico wire tap. You understand what I'm saying? This is a Rico wire tap. So me being a part of the situation, I could give my spare because I know the truth. And I'm not saying this out of no dislike for Jim Jones because Jim Jones was always all right. You know, with me, he just always seemed scary around me, you know, which I didn't feel comfortable with. And Melly used to tell me, you know, yo, that nigga Jim, when he get around you, he act, you know. So rather than that, I don't take nothing away, you know, from, you know, from the situation. I don't, I'm not saying this out of no hate or no dislike but being that I was in the same situation a little more worse than Jim Jones I know Jim Jones made a a cooperating agreement which stands as this if and that's that allegedly was, now you said but because you saying that because of your experience that's just, that's that's what happens my experience with the government right Okay. You you said this under a under a RICO investigation. This was going on. They have to question you. They have to question you because you're involved, right? Verbally, and you're giving some kind of threatened order um, orders out or something going on like that. You're giving orders out. 
or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So being that you do that under a RICO investigation, you have to be questioned. You dig what I'm saying? And being that he's who he is, he's not going to have a regular questioning. He's going to have a, hey, listen, we have you on this recording. We can apprehend you. Or would you be willing to take the stand if need be against them guys you was on the phone with? You don't just walk scot-free for having a valid plot on a week of wiretap. It, 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 it don't work like that. It don't just disappear. Hassan, what you think? Y'all already know what I think, man. Like, listen, and, and, and I listen to that 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 lawyer dude and everybody act like it's a lawyer saying that Jim is is it's not my whole thing is like this, right? I've sat back and watched dudes get life in jail because they said I gotta go to the store and get pampers. The feds interpreted that those pampers was drugs being sold. Uh -huh, this right. because of a federal wiretap sitting up right. there talking about. He has to get super violated, and he actually right. wanted the details on how to shoot his security because security in New York can't carry guns. This is a federal, first of all, he's part of non-trade. You're part of non-trade. You are non-trade. You're a gang member. You gave a hit over the internet. You see what I'm saying? You was the reason. I, why the they, I think it was over the phone. Yeah, he, he was the reason. Why the feds moved it so fast? It was his phone, his conversation. So they just going to skip out on the part with Jimmy? And see, my whole thing is like this, right, with, with Jim Jones. How do you not sit down and try to at least give the people an understanding? I would respect Jim Jones more if the nigga said, listen. I'm going to tell you why. Go ahead. I'm going to tell you why. I want to respect the nigga if he said, listen, I know it sounds crazy. But that's my world. You know what I mean? I'm not working with these people. He won't even tell you he ain't working with the people. I, I won't. Even, I won't say that. I won't say that he's a he's a working federal informant. I wouldn't say that. What I would say this though, I would say when they approached him and threatened him with prison time, he agreed. If they approached him, they may never approached him. So you know, we say if they approached him. No, is 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 I, I, I I've been in that courtroom. I know the prosecutors. They're going to approach you. That that's not nothing. That's not no superior court. Some city court. You dealing with individuals that's on a, a conversation. They're coming to approach you and ask you what is going on. Right. He's not. He's he is. It's not like as he as he's some some. CEO of a record major record company and he was saying this out of anger. He was saying this coming from a gang related perspective. Wack posted a video on IG challenged Jim Jones to post his paperwork and explain how he avoided being charged in the Treyway case. There's no paper. Now there's, it, there's no paperwork. Only thing Jim did was say, hey, listen. If Melly and them go to trial, he will cooperate. No correction. What Wack told him is to show paperwork on that down south case with the gun. That's what he told him to show paperwork on how you get around that gun and drugs on a high speed chase running from the police and got caught with guns and drugs in the car. How did that case just go away? In not in defense of Jim with that, but what all I'm gonna say is, you know, how sometimes you might be in the car with somebody and, and, and some shit. Well. You in the car with somebody, police get on your ass, whatever the case might be. Okay, Jim is the bag. So whoever, somebody else might take that. So we, for all we know, yeah, the person I, that he was with probably took that. So, you know what I mean? So then that gave, you know what I mean? That, that's how he right. was, able to, was able to wiggle. I could go, go with that. I, mean? I could go with that. And many things get Mr. Shrew, you know, in situations like that. I could definitely go with somebody else, tuck the hammer charge, but... It had to be some written paperwork from the courts mm -hmm. that you're not a part of that case no more. Yes. Now, is Wack right in asking for that? Now, Wack didn't say Jim was a rat. 
six nine was insinuating that. Now, does Jim need to clear his name? And do you think that he owes the world an explanation, or is that shit just silly shit that they really don't mean nothing in the corporate world where where they getting money at? It really don't, and to be honest with you, in the corporate world, man, it, it don't even matter, man. It matter, it matter for the individuals that's you know doing it for the whatever they got going on, you know. But for the world that count, them guys don't even know what's going on. You can't even tell them guys in that position. What it was. You ask, you tell them, hey, you know, they're gonna like, what are you talking about? <laughs> because that's that that's not they that's not they fail. Haas, what you think, bro? I think I think personally, when you look at Jim Jones' whole resume, it just don't look right. Nothing about the I, I personally feel like Jim Jones is the agent of Satan. Like, first and foremost, I tell people all the time, Jim Jones, OG Mac may have you know, played a big part with the UBN or Rikers Island. But Jim Jones was the billboard for Bloods in New York in the streets with this Dipset movement. He was but, a walking billboard. And but he's, you, opportunity. he's seen the opportunity and he sees that. Yeah. He sees that. You know, because I remember when he first started out, I was in the penitentiary, but I was getting the letters and I was speaking to Mel. I was speaking to Mel. You know, I seen that whole thing fold over. And I seen it go from, from whatever it was to shit. Because I came home to it already on the down slope of it. So he seen the opportunity and what he did, he seized it. And he used those little young ones around him with the glitz and the hood thing to keep him afloat and keep him protected. But as for like he asked for his character and his image, yeah, he should give his audience, his viewers, an explanation and, you know, speak upon what happened instead of talking about other things that he's been going off edge from. See, 6 9 know. Why 6 9 know what he did? Because 6 9 was there. Well, you, you look know? at the Casanova, right? Casanova two times. One of his charges is promoting gang activity through his music. Right. Jim Jones did the same thing. Casanova two times is in jail for less than what they could put Jim Jones in jail for. Well, we had a free Casanova too, man. Free cast, man, because these guys be young, huh? So, you know what I mean? You got to look at it like we're a little older than cast in them. So just put put ourselves, give us that type of money, give us that type of, you know, what they say, give us that type of clout. Yeah. You got at that age, we probably would have crashed out too, my nigga. You know what I mean? Just It, it is what it is, but we didn't have the internet. If we would have had the internet in our era, it would be some some of us that probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. Be nah, let, me, let me say this, Timbo. Let me tell you something, right? The one up? thing I don't want to be all right. is a hypocrite. Okay. I was 10 times worse than all these niggas. Between right. me and Snow, I know, because I done heard about Snow. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I know the way I came up and the shit that I was doing. It's like people think that I be bragging. I don't brag when I tell you that every time I've been to jail was for homicides and attempted murders. Because the young boys in the street are not going to be able to relate to you if you ain't been through the fire. Right, exactly. That's a fact. That's a fact. So, they, they, like, these young, like, like when, when you when you look at, like, when I said, when I, when I made that video and I said, don't compare me to a basketball player, it wasn't me dissing Kwame. It was just me making, you, making, making a nigga understand, like, our lifestyles is totally different. At 18 years old, this nigga ran into $60 million. At 18 years old, I went straight to jail for homicide. I got charged with a body in an attempt murder as soon as I went to jail. So our lifestyles was totally different. And I understand Casanova, you know what I mean? He get into a situation with, with, with Trey Wade. These niggas are certified gangsters. And then now you you reaching out to the apes and you putting dudes around you because you feel like that's like right right now with me. I know I need to put security around me because I'm getting too famous. And I know I can't just be having like all right, me, Snow, and and, and, and Shoddy decides to go outside. We all gripped up. As soon as we get pulled over, we all going to jail. Sometimes you have to go the legal route when you the bag. You can't be running around no more with three and four. 
burn is on you when you are the bag and you got to protect your niggas. This is what security get paid for. So casting over two time, he didn't do nothing wrong by putting the apes around him. What he did was he put niggas around him that could possibly take him down through an indictment because they was already being watched. And some of the shit that you listen to, even in their charges, is like, yo, the feds is just throwing shit together right now to get niggas. Y'all throwing shit together. Cass wanted something he ain't never had, man. That was street, street fame, man. You know, and a lot of us that come from these urban get, we earn for that street fame, that gangster title. Like these young kids is doing now. But the only thing they go get is a stale prison cell or a cold place in the cemetery. You know, and um, that's what Cass wanted. Cass wanted that, you know, that street fame and being able to get a glimpse of it by mixing hip hop with it. You know, it kind of pushed him over the edge. He didn't know how to distance himself, man. But you know, free cast, man. You know, I ain't, I ain't really never had no issue with them. This is how a lot of these young kids move, man. Until they see it's a bigger wolf around than them, and that's what cast they know how to separate itself from the little wolves. The little wolves will eventually bring you down. Hosh, you want to elaborate on that? Even the big, even the big wolf. Like, listen, I look at look at how they had federal wiretaps or, or, or rather recordings. They was recording them when he went to visit them on in, in jail. Like he, okay. you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's sad because just knowing a nigga makes you affiliated. He went to jail and this is why Cass got to understand dudes don't even want to go see him in jail now because it's like, yo, so you expect us to fall in the same footsteps that you just fell in? I know, know. Said, man. What, I know I know when 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 well, 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 one of the homies, my brother X from Bronx River, right? From Sex Money Murder. When X got locked up, people that was writing him, the feds was knocking on their door like, don't write him again or you're going to be in there with him next. Mm. Right, right. It ain't a game. The feds don't play. No, it's not, it, no I mean, yeah, I, you know, I'll be the first one to tell you. It's not It's not a game, man. It's, it's See, but see, well, these guys don't understand it's not a game until they in that position. That's when they don't, that's when they realize, oh, it ain't a game. But then again, it's still a game while they ain't holding. It becomes out of game is when they get to the penitentiary and not a medium or FCI where Shadi and Melanin guys is at. When they get to a penitentiary where everybody on the compound got multiple life synthesis, that's when it get real. Now, Wax says, this was also mentioned. Now, Wax said, um, Trav, Jim Jones, Mel, and others are mad because they can no longer use 6 9 to make money. And it has nothing to do with his snitching but all to do with money. Hold up. Say that again? He said, well, this is what, La this is what Wack is alleging. He said that um, Wack says that Trav, Jim Jones, and Mel, and Shadi, and others are mad because they can no longer use 6 9 to make money. Hold on, wait. We wait, had wait. nothing to do with snitching, but all wait. to do with the money. Hold on, for what Trav never had nothing to do with none of that. Let's 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 just correct that for the record. You know, let's let's. Well, him Trav, and Jim Jones have a close relationship, right? But Jim Jones ain't even had nothing to do with it. So only how, only listen, 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 Jim. That's what I'm saying. Like they got these corny dudes trying to change the narrator. The narrator is a simple man. It's, it's the makeup. It's directly to the point. Jim ain't have nothing to do with anything dealing with 6 ix 9 The only how Jim had an alliance to 6 ix 9 was through Melly. And Melly ain't have nothing to do with 6 ix 9 Only how Melly begin to have something to do with 6 ix 9 is when he seen Shadi and me brung heart, brung Nuke on board. That's when Melly wanted to get involved because of the beef him and Nuke had. He didn't want to see Nuke eating without him eating. So that's how Melly came on board. Like the kid, what's his name, Trav said, Melly ain't really want to have nothing to do with it, but his greed, his greed of seeing certain figures involved made him want to come on board. I think it's just, I, I, first of all, I think it's childish and stupid. Niggas had a problem with 6 9 6 9 doing shows, running down on Meek Mills and everything else. 
handle your business. They brought that investigation on Takashi 69 through CEO Chris. Yeah, then, they, then they made it even worse when they sat up there and threatened his life. Y'all pulled Takashi in the mix of a federal investigation that y'all already had going on with yourselves. Now, the little corny ass shooting with what with, with, with be or whatever the case may be, that's just uh, 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 the, the, the feds just gassing it up even more. That corny ass shooting shouldn't even been on the charges. Right. That, that's just keeping it funky. But the feds going to hype everything up. Everything going to get hyped up with the feds. So the reality of it is them niggas don't want to take responsibility for who they are and the fuck ups that they made. Here it is. You let you you let a you let a, a multi millionaire fall on fall in on your lap, and niggas were so ignorant they couldn't even last a whole year with this young boy. During some of these heated back and forths, right now I'm not going to mention the names, but one or two individuals from Jim Camp may have incriminated themselves by sending threats. Now, do these rappers need to fall back and understand that not everything is meant for the internet, man? And anything that they say in Clubhouse. Anything they say during a live on Instagram or anything that they post online could be used against them, could be used against Mel. When Mel try to go see the board, who knows? You know, he might go try to go see the, the board yeah. and they, they they heard yeah. that. And now they yeah. say, oh, now, well, you ain't changed. Right. You're still this, you know what I mean? So right. you got to be mindful right. now. Haas, let's start. Let's start with you, Haas, while you gather your thoughts, um, Snow. But what you think? What, what do you think about that? And. Did they learn anything from the Treyway case to still be carrying on? For me, niggas is irritating because for one, Jim Jones is his own man, and I'm getting for one, I'm not, I'm not feeling, and I don't respect the fact that he had Mel call from jail. This man is in jail. He's was in, he had federal custody. You have a call on the phone. Handle your own beef. You are, you a man. Use your right. voice. I agree. Man, man up yourself. Why would you have Mel call from jail? You know, to, to say anything, that's for one. For two, like I didn't see, I, about, I didn't see no logic in that man. That was like that was some real kindergarten. I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run to the class to get my brother. Meet me in the meet me at the lunchroom type shit. I don't know. That was some real corny, man. That's just corny. But these kids, these dudes, been corny. Just cause they got money doesn't make them. They, these dudes is really corny, man. And then it's like you know me and me and me and um. Me and Trav got into an argument earlier today. You know what I mean? I ended up on the phone with him or whatever the case may be because a mutual friend put him on the phone. And, you know, more or less, he talking like, yo, he's son, son talking like, yo. It's For me, it's like, first of all, mind your business. Right. Yo, you should have direct, you should have said, yo, why won't you call Snow Billy because you talking on some shit that you don't even you wasn't even around. You came about later on because of your relationship with whoever fucking Jim Jones them know. You wasn't in the mix. So at the end of the day, homie is like really talking on shit that really kind of just touched me. Like, yo, boy, you talking about a case you have no involvement in, man. There's some bloods in New York that say that um that whack is bad. He banned from Brooklyn. Now, should Wax stay away from New York for the foreseeable future? Or will nothing happen if he come back to New York? You know, you got guys like um, CK. CK um, made a video saying that he want to fight Wax. And, um, you know, the internet be buzzing. Oh, you know how this type of shit go viral, man. You know how it be. Listen, you, talk, you, talking about, you talking about dudes that are doing anything to see his opportunity, man. Like, 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 like yeah, Wax, Wax, Wax better keep bringing his ass in why if he want to get a check. You know, and as for the guys that's telling him, don't come to Brooklyn. Really? You really think that these dudes is built to have some work carried out if he come to Brooklyn? These dudes do this shit for the social media, man. They do it for um, short clips and YouTube and Instagram. Boy ain't, boy ain't, what he got to, boy ain't, boy can come to New York. This ain't, this ain't the ever where, this ain't that ever, man. See, the crazy part about it is, though, what niggas don't realize is that they telling a the nigga like Wack that he can't come to Brooklyn. There's no money in Brooklyn. Right. All, all the money is all the money is really downtown Manhattan. Right. That's the one. So as far as telling him he can't come back to New York, that's a slippery slope because a lot of show money goes through California. Right. And let me. And then, 
Okay. Well, you're telling a nigga like Wack that you can't come to New York and he decides to flip that card. Wack is strong in California. Wack and, and Wack and Big U run hard together. Big U is strong out there. Right. So when you're saying that now, and then you, you got this coming from a camp of dudes, like, I mean, come on, man. You got videos with Jim Jones getting beat up in different shows in different places. Do you really want to play that with a dude like Wack? I'm just keeping it all the way funky. Do you really? Is that a game that dudes really, really want to play? Oh, you can't come here. You can't go there. That's like, an ugly game. I mean, we done seen the footage with Jim, with, 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 with Jimmy Entourage getting beat up in Connecticut, and Jimmy ain't even. What's that Connecticut or um, yeah, or Mass? One of the two. Jimmy ain't even throw a punch. Yeah, I think it's Massachusetts. He's standing by the truck, right? Then yeah. Then he had another situation with him at home. Um, it was it um. Be more, whatever the case may be. He, uh, he got way too many situations where them niggas done got washed up. Like, come on, man. Yeah, man. The money Jim, ain't the money. Jim, uh, Jimmy, Jim Jones' money ain't long no more. But ain't, be no, but you know what it is? You got, you, got these, you got these little young, dirty kids growing up now, and they willing to do anything just to get 15 minutes of fame or a hug or a picture. They'll do anything these kids will do. And then you know how many kids I've seen Come to the penitentiary that used to be around rappers, and once they get to the penitentiary, they all pop. Like they like. Yeah, I was with this person. I was rolling with that person. Then they say, "Hey, can I get a suit?" Yo, yo, you fool, man. Yo, I wrote. I wrote. Look, dude, say, yo, man, I was down with this. I was gang that nigga, and then they told my yo. You got a heron and a suit? A what? A heron and a suit? What happened to them rapper dudes you were just running around with your pistol with? It's all it's, it's all a facade, man, so they get the downstate or Oklahoma reception. Yo, what, what Trav said, Wack has met his match, and he wants to meet up with Wack. Now, has, has do you think Wack has met his match? Well, who? Trav. Well, him, him and Trav had some words, because, you know, the streets is a young man's sport. Man. Grab, we all know that. Grab, we all know the streets grab, is a young man's sport. Trav is waiting to get an indictment, man. Trav might as well just walk, walk himself to the courthouse and tell them niggas to go ahead and bring him in, man. He don't want to be out here no more, man. That's all, man. Trav Trav, he, ain't no young, he ain't no young boy no more. Neither. I'm getting sick and tired of niggas calling niggas that's 35 years old young boys. You're 30 years old. You're not right. a young boy. You're right. a grown-ass right. man. Right. Look, true, Trav, true, true. Trav, Trav looking to go to jail, man. I don't know what he do or whatever his um whatever his situation is, man. But for him to be speaking like that, and we when I say young, I'm not making an excuse for him. I'm just saying, all right, I'm not the same man I was when I was 35. You know what I'm saying? As you as as, as you grow older, your, your level of maturity, of course, grow as well. You know what I mean? So it's just that they making some mistakes that a motherfucker feel that a nigga would have made himself. At that point in life, you know what I mean? But, of course. But it, 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 ain't, it ain't an excuse because you know you're a man. When you, you're 21, you're a man I, in, in the I mean, you know At the end of the day, at, he's old enough not to come off like, as a piss boy. He's starting to look like a Rikers Island doji. Uh, right. And I, I seen when you said that, you know what? And me being, you know, me being, you know, in them situations, and I seen this kind of behavior take place. That's the behavior he's displaying when I see this. Like, Yo, like, what you got to do with Jim? Because Jim, like, what you, I'm, okay, that's your brother. That's your brother. Right? Everybody got a brother. But Jim got a mouth, man. Jim got a mouth. But, you know, Jim do the same thing when he come in spot. he come in, he see the gangsters, he going to run out. I've been in space. And niggas that I see this no boy been there. I've been in space and Jim come in real quick. Jim see the guys and Jim running out, man. So Jim always been a nervous dude, man. So I see why this guy, whoever... The, the 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 fifty cent trap dude is or whatever he is. Ain't he down with G Unit the son? What he what he what he G Unit? What he Rock Nation? What is he? The nigga he no he minute, from uh, well listen we from Queens I, man. I, I, you know, I, I, from, I didn't have from no Queens. problems with, from Queens. Man. I didn't have no quarrels with with Trav, but when he called on the phone when when when, when 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 we did the three way and I spoke to him earlier, man, I just didn't like the fact that like like first and foremost, yo son, you talking like you the uh, you the only tough nigga on his fucking phone. So the dudes just be telling themselves because they see a nigga blogging on the internet like I don't have a history and even if I didn't have a history like 
what you think that I'm going to be doing while you just going upside my head with a champagne bottle? Because that's what the nigga said. Like, you think I'm just like, first and foremost, you look like you ain't never even won a fight in your life. You Niggas said what? Come straight to the guns. You say straight to the guns. To the champagne you, you, I'm just gonna let you come up and go upside my head with a champagne bottle. Like, what did you stupid? Yo, how the conversation get there though? How's what happened? What you say? Because I'm listening to the nigga. <laughs> was y'all calling to patch it up, or was y'all calling to just talk behind now, the scenes and put some, put some water on the situation? I didn't even know he had a problem until Lucky Dawn called on the phone because we got a mutual friend. He was like, "Yo, I'm getting phone calls." He was like, "Hold on." So he patched me through, and son on the phone talking, and while he on the phone talking, he on some old yeah, because you know. You know what I mean? You might have to, it's the it's the jungle out there and it's lions out there. Like, nigga, who the fuck, yo, what part do you not understand that I grew up in Bronx from a project? I didn't grow up in Queens, nigga. I grew up in the projects in the Bronx. What whoa, 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 no, whoa, nigga. I'm from Queens too, nigga. Hold on, <laughs> hold on the phone, nigga. <laughs> you know, us you know, Bronx niggas, like, bro, you, you can't tell a Bronx or Brooklyn nigga nothing. Right. You can't tell a Bronx or Brooklyn nigga nothing. It's like, yo, I, I, you sit up there telling me, you know what I mean? Because it's lions and tigers, and, and you might run into a lion. Like, nigga, every lion I ran into, I'm undefeated in these streets. Fuck is you talking about? I done had beef with some of the illest niggas. Going mm -hmm. back to the days of the, the original sex money murder. I had beef with the original niggas. The, the original, shout out to them, because I don't have beef with them no more. But I, my beef, like the beefs that we had, I was raised by B.O. Like, I don't understand what niggas be saying. I'm not just a nigga that came out. We live, in, we live in an era where these dudes that's around these other certain industry people want to see him who's the toughest. You understand what I'm saying? Follow me. They want, they want these other dudes in the industry, right, who are in the street. Understand, son? These dudes are in the street. So the industry guys that go around the industry dudes, they want to seem like they bark is louder than whoever else is, or they the toughest, or they this, that, the third. This is, so I see where his 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 bark his bark is coming in from. Nigga want to prove to me he tough. Get off Section Eight welfare. Get your girl off Section Eight welfare. Get out of them tenement buildings and uh, and go pay for, go pay go pay for a mortgage, man. I don't care about the niggas right. fake diamonds and right. fake jewelry. Like nigga, pay some bills. Because right, the reality right. of it is, oh, oh, yeah, but that's 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 when the real ticket come in when your bills are seven, eight thousand a month. Exactly, niggas don't even understand all that gangster shit. Beef is a broke man sport. That's a fact. That, that's why a nigga can easily just uh, rot, rot. If you listen to the nigga on Clubhouse, sit up there talking about yo, you know what I mean? <laughs> niggas talking about keep my name like nigga. If you on the internet, you feel you fair play for everybody. That's first of all. Second of all, you all clubhouse sitting up there telling dudes like, "Yo, you know what I mean? I'm willing. To, I'm willing to crash. I'm willing to crash. You willing to crash because you don't have nothing going for yourself. You willing to crash because you don't value your wife and your children if you even have that. So if you talk about you willing to crash, I'm willing to do twenty. That means your life is miserable, nigga. These dudes be getting caught in the moment, man. These dudes get caught in the moments, man. We live for the moments, man. Dudes be getting caught in the moment without even really thinking. You know what I'm saying? And then you know, that's all it takes. Right, right, right. Because right, now right, you're gonna right. put something out there for the world that you might not, you might, you might mean that shit at the time, but you didn't mean for that shit to be projected to the world. You saying it because dudes be dealing with emotions. Yeah, what he said about crashing. Something about being willing to crash because you know he he, he tired of whatever the situation is. He tired of it or whatever. I, 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 come I, along I, those lines. Don't I, quote I, me I, on that. So wait, wait, wait. How you willing to crash for somebody who ain't even willing to crash for himself, crash for man? Themselves. You a crash. You a crash dummy, man. That's crash dummy behavior, bro. You know what I'm saying? Slash crankhead behavior. You can. You, you know what though? You could always tell a nigga that ain't really getting no time. Because right. if you, first and foremost, like, you you talking, you talking like that, it's one thing if somebody threaten you and you like, all right, we going all out, we family, but you volunteering, Jim Jones don't defend himself like that, but you out there, yeah, and Jim tell him, nigga, yo, chill. Right. He's like, nah, I'm just saying, you know what I mean, I'm I'm, 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 I'm willing to crash, like, well, go ahead and crash by yourself then, nigga. Yeah. It's like, you know, with the conversation I have with Styles P or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. you know, it, you know. I like styles or whatever the case may be, but I just want to, it's like, for me, 
I always seen the image of D block, D block, D block. Like, nah, we ain't dealing with them. Like, Freaky Zeke's a certified rat. You see what I'm saying? The same niggas that say they against rat got a rat in their crew. He was actually just now speaking about the whole situation with um with Chauncey Dillon with the paperwork that that I got from Chauncey and you know people saying that the paperwork people were saying that the paperwork was fake and all that. Well, this is the paperwork. This is the paperwork from the prison. This Chauncey sent this to me. Let me cover up my shit. But this is the paperwork. That's right. Chauncey. That's the, well, that's the, uh, well, well, you know, let me tell you something, man. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. people like to believe like to believe things is not true, man. And if that's what they want to run with, then who would it? You know what I'm saying? Like now, you know, he has his own narrative because, of course, you know, he he doesn't have his freedom, so he didn't have a, a, a outlet to say his truth. You know what I mean? Whatever that might be, so he wanted to send that as to say. This is the situation, and this is what the individual did, and, yeah, and been, so forth and so forth. So that's why he sent the paper for us to upload, just to give him a voice from prison. You know, there was a lot of shit that went on with that case. You know, Freaky Zeke and them, they lost a close friend. Somebody got murdered. You know what I mean? So let's not overlook that part. You know right. what I mean? So you know how it go, man. Free, his, where, where did his loyalty, if it's even true, his loyalty was supposed to lie. With his friend now, how he went about whatever the case was, that's on him. That's his. That's he got to. He got to. He got to wear that jacket. You but know what I mean? But, that, yeah, I seen he cooperated with drugs. <laughs> oh my God, that's different. Yeah, well, I mean, as far as what the paperwork say, it's it's kind of wicked, man. You know, and, you know, as far as what the paperwork say, man. Like, like, like know, several- it said that he he would uh, as, as part of his plea agreement, he would have had to cooperate. With several ongoing investigations, and that's the same thing. And that's the same thing Jim is doing right now. And Mel go show it, but Mel can't show it because that's the only one he got feeding him right now. You know what? It's it's it's, it's crazy how you be having thoroughbreds loyal to bitch niggas because they got the bag. Yo, that's that's and that's what it is in this industry, man. It don't matter. It don't matter whatever your pedigree is. If you got finances, individuals go move with the with the wave, man. And that's the ever we living in. You dig what I'm saying? Because everybody don't have means of getting a bag or have means of standing on their own. Some people is only as strong as the people that surround them. When they stand alone, they feel insecure with themselves, man. And that's what we dealing with with a lot of these industry dudes and these guys, man. They insecure with who they are. So they want to be seen with this person. Seeing with that person. You know, these dudes is like this. They worse than strippers, man. Now, look. Now, with all this crazy shit going on, right? Now, on the flip side, you think Jim might need to be careful as far as going to the West with all this shit? Because we've seen it in the past. We've seen Pop Smoke. We've seen Biggie. We've seen dudes go out to the West and have real issues. You know what I mean? And then, and then it whack, turned whack. into a East versus West. But you whack, know what I mean? Whack. We don't want this to be a New York versus California. Nah. Because you know I got what? partners from California that, that I never had an issue with. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure you guys got people from the West that you, that you might be cool with that ain't going to even entertain that type of shit, but it's a lot that will. A lot right. of knuckleheads that will get behind this wave because it's popular right now, and it'll turn into some other shit. So do you but, think that these guys really need to try to nip this shit in the bud for real, for real? I mean, it's not nothing to really get into because Jim Jones is not irrelevant in the industry, man, and Wack is not a rapper. So now, Wack but, is definitely, you know, he's not, you know, he's not from LA, but he definitely has a certain level of respect the on the from, West Coast. From? Well, he's from Pacoima. You know, that's a part of that's a part of Southern California. But man, you want Pacoima. me to be honest with you, Timbo? Yo, go ahead, of I course. Per- I personally, I personally feel like that that clubhouse app that gave all the niggas some 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 money. Jim Jones, for the first time, even speaking on any of this, and he speaks on it on Clubhouse. I think they paid them just to get to, to get more people to come into that Clubhouse shit because they're trying to pull people. And then you got mad celebrities going on Clubhouse. And it's like, it, I think this whole shit is staged to me, to be honest with you. I yeah, think it's staged. I, and, you know, I, 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 definitely, I definitely know, you know, 
Um, I don't, I don't know in regards to them being paid anything. So you think in stage with all parties involved? I think, I think Jimmy, Jim Jones does not speak. He purposely avoids speaking on any of this stuff. He, but he made sure when he came out, he's on Clubhouse and he's on there with Trev. You see what I'm saying? It's like all of this started on Clubhouse too. Wack is on Clubhouse. Takashi's on Clubhouse. It's like. But well, Trav better drop some music right now and capitalize on the situation. You gotta understand, son. Takashi and Wack coming out were on what 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 were academics. Academics just got a whole new deal just because of that. So there's money coming. The smart niggas is getting money. Other niggas is just being puppeteers, like jumping out the window, like 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 the way Trav jumping out the window. There's bags being. All, all this publicity going on and all these views going on, this academics got a bag for a new podcast. But yeah, of I course, all this stuff is definitely stirring up popularity. Clubhouse is definitely trending crazy. So yeah, I mean that could I I, I could see it. You know what I mean? I could definitely can see it. I definitely can see it. I posted some paperwork, which was sent to me by a guy named Chauncey Dillon. Now, Chauncey, he was sentenced to 30 years to life on December 17th of 2004. Now, for allegedly assaulting the dipset rapper Freaky Zeke and murdering Freaky's friend. Now, during a shootout in Manhattan, now Chauncey still maintains that he's innocent. He sent me some paperwork, which I have posted on Instagram. The link is in the description if you want to check it out. But it claims Freaky Zeke allegedly entered into a guilty plea to a drug felony in North Carolina, and that's part of the plea bargain. He was to cooperate as an informant in unrelated drug investigations in North Carolina. Now, Zeke received 35 months for that case. Now, it also claims Zeke cooperated in New York against Charles C. Dillon as well. Now, what are your thoughts, and have you seen the paperwork, and have you um, got a chance to, 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 to read it? Yeah, I, I, read, I read the paperwork also the freaky Zeke and Chauncey Billis, right? Chauncey Dillon, yeah, his name is Chauncey Dillon. Chauncey Dillon, right? Yeah. So, and and this is what I'm trying to tell you, right? Um, 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 this is not the game, man. What you think? You get a change? Did you hear that question? Well, I mean, the paperwork is the paperwork. People been knew for a long time that Freaky was a rat, and, you know, and and, 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 and and like, see what what I don't like about about this gang shit in New York, if Freaky was in the mountains, Attica, Sing Sing, you know what I mean, Clinton, if he was in Comstock, they would tear his ass up. All yeah. of his politics yeah. would not be going on. He, he'd be a big be fool. Yeah. Some people are saying that the paperwork is fake because it spells Zeke's last name wrong. Now, Cam's last name is spelled Giles with a G. Zeke's last name is spelled Giles with a J. Now, it's, they say Wikipedia this and Wikipedia that. Man, you can edit that shit, man. All you got to do is go to the official website, North Carolina Offender Search Database, and his name will pop up as Giles with a J. Now, this is an official government website, man. This is, and um, they have his inmate number, and, all, and it's right there. You can just take the inmate number. And put it into the search, and it's gonna pop up. Now, um, now, how much it tells you how much time was served, what he was charged with, everything. So let's not, you know, what I mean, we wouldn't put it out there. Of course, I looked it up. I'm not gonna put it out there, knowing that it came from the source wasn't reliable. And even though I said, well, okay, Chauncey, it might be a reliable source. It's coming from the prison. It got all the the court seals. It got everything on it. So I said, okay, well, let me let me just do my due diligence. And what we did was we went to the North Carolina and make, you know, the, the, the website. And we, all you got to do is put in the, 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 um, the, the, inmate, the inmate number and all the information pops up pertaining to the case as long as the case is over. So that's where that, that's where that, if so we matched the information and that's where it came from. So it's not right. like we just took that and ran with it. So we wouldn't do that. That saying is fake. Where's that audience coming from? Like where? West well, I mean, you know, it's just you know people because you know sometimes you know people they they buy into the into the characters that you guys are. They you know sometimes they you know you know how it go, man. They fans, you know, they right. fans right. of these guys. So you know, and friends and loved ones and so on and so forth. You know how it go. 
So right. people going to go to come. Some people going to come to the, their defense, and that and that's what you know. A couple of instances where that happened. I've been saying that on Instagram, and I just want to let put that out there publicly that we wouldn't just go with some shit willy nilly, man. Not knowing because of course motherfuckers make fake paperwork. Of course, it's happened in the past. I, we went to the website and we punched it in, and we you know created. You pay, you created an account, and you could log in, and you can. Get all of the paperwork for anybody, whoever. If they've been incarcerated, they got a case. That case has been settled, or whatever it is, it comes. You know, the, uh, a verdict has came to. All that becomes public information. So it's there. You can look it up yourself. Go to the website. Don't take my word for it. But that's the well, only reason why we presented. But, it. but 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 let's be honest, right? Let's 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 let's. I mean, it's good for the views of everybody. Let's be. But who is a fucking freaky Ziki though? Like. <laughs> like who the fuck is a freaky sneaky man? Like who is this nigga? I mean, you know, he made a name for himself with the dip set, man. You know, of course you can't deny that. I mean, he made a name for himself. Is he know, a rap with the dip set? D- does he rap? I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't think so. I don't know. You sure. still not left. Sure. I wasn't around for the 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 Zikis and like that's why I'm like. Is he a rapper? Is he? A, I don't. And I, I came home later on. All right. Now Jim was on Clubhouse and said, "I quote, and I quote, I don't associate myself with rats. I don't play with people that play with rats. I don't play with people that give rats a platform, and I don't play with people that are close to rats because oh. that makes you a rat to me." That's all phony. Now, He's a liar. Is he being a hypocrite because of, of he? Course he is. The proof is in the, the pudding. Lie detector test determined that that was a lie. That was a big lie. Like, man, listen, something ain't right about Jim Jones. I don't care what nobody say. You know, me and Mano, me and Mano got into a, a, a argument about that. Talking about Jim Jones is the real nigga. Like, how he a real nigga if Stack Bundles died in Far Rockaway, living in Queens, when all Jimmy had to do was move him out? He wanted to move out of Far Rockaway, and Jimmy told him, "You could come stay with me." He said, "No, I want my." He's a man. He already had his own apartment. He wanted to move out and have a crib somewhere else. Yeah, that girl, you know, the girl Jaja. Jaja went on the Queens Flip she show. Broke and she, down, said that. she broke that down on Queens Flip. She was like, "Yo, like <laughs> niggas was fucked up in the game. This nigga got a hit ball, and he got one of the hottest songs out in the country, and wouldn't even, you know, what I mean, wouldn't even get a nigga his own crib. Now nah, you can come live with me." To follow up on my previous question, now we know that um, Jim is signed to Rock Nation for a management deal with Rock Nation, right? The Rock Nation CEO is Miss Desiree Perez, who once was an informant and was recently pardoned by Trump. Now, does this further emphasize how hypocritical some of these guys may be? And um, with the statement about not standing next to rats and all that, or does that shit just matter in the streets? And like I said earlier, that shit doesn't matter in the corporate world where they get money at. A motherfucker that, but these corporate guys, the guys that signing these checks, they don't give a fuck about who you told on. They give a fuck about whatever project y'all about to That's take exactly. on. So you what, know what y'all think? You know they gonna tell you you should have told on them. Right? Get them out of here. If he's in the way. Get them out of here. And that's how it goes in the corporate world. That's just what it is, man. What you think, Oz? I mean, for me, my whole thing is like this, right? For decades, these niggas taught the streets and spoke of God. Like, Jim Jones named his shit the ghost of Rich Porter, right? But since Alpo been home, he ain't even mentioned Rich Porter. Cameron sat up there right, on, right. on TV and said that if he, if a child predator, serial killer, was out there, he wouldn't snitch on him. But now y'all signed to a label where this chick took down two cartels. Everything that they stand for, everything they said they stand for was a lie. That's like right. a nigga, you know what I mean? Like you, you like you teaching, you 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 gang affiliated. It's one thing, like with, with Styles was when me and Styles was on going back and forth, Styles was like, you sending the wrong message because it's like a dude going on a job and finding out that a nigga ratted, so he's not gonna work a construction job. No, that's not the same. These are gang members. Right. That, that 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 is active gang members right. that have a choice to sign over to different corporations and chose to go to a fucking rat a, a rap like the, 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 you you working for the DEA? 
It's yeah. different. That's totally different. You know, you know what's killed me, right? What, what killed me is, but they, but on the other side, they throwing up gun size and they boom, 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 and they and they go kill this person. They send a hits out. Like I hear a guy Meek Mills rapping, right? And I heard some shit in his one of his rap songs where he's saying he 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 go kill him and he go send the hits out and they go spin the block and they go do all this. How you doing all this, man? When you in this kind of corporate situation, in one minute you for the youth. But in your music, you telling them how to kill up the whole neighborhood. I'm lost in this shit, man. I'm lost, bro. That's why I would never, man. I'm glad I sit on my own two feet. I got to be my boss, man. Nobody can't tell Shane when to get up and when to lay down, man. I ain't even do it when I was in the penitentiary. When they told me to do whatever, if I didn't want to do it, I ain't do it. If they ain't like it, you know what I told them? Go write it up, man. You got a misbehavior report book and a pencil or pen. You write that shit up. I can't be pulled along how these dudes be. Because one minute they for the they for the fight the power, but then they go on their music to sell records and they teach you how to how to spin the block and jump out and put a contract on somebody's head. You hear me? And I wanna be the good guy. I wanna be the good guy now. I wanna be the good guy. I don't wanna be the bad guy. I've learned. And I want to be the good guy, man. I'm not going to stop throwing hot dogs because that's entertainment. <laughs> you hear me? And I don't want nobody to get the entertainment of Snow Billy confused with the business side of Snow Billy. But I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I want to, but you know what I realized? The bad guys want to be the good guys. The good guys want to be the bad guys. I always wanted to be the good guy. I always wanted to be the good guy. Even to the way I wear my hat. Look how I wear my hat. This is the good guy way to wear the hat. Look. <laughs> yeah. hey, yo, look, check it. So look, this next question is based, based to you, Hus Hus. Now, I heard a few rappers on Clubhouse talking down on bloggers and YouTubers like yourself and, and, and myself and, and now Snow. Okay, man. Don't now, why, do, why do these rappers oh, look down? Don't leave now, me out. No, nah, nah, of course not. Now... Why do these rappers look down on bloggers, YouTubers, but these same rappers are up on Clubhouse telling the world how real they are? And some of you, some of the rappers are now, some of these rappers are now YouTubers themselves. Now, when did being a rapper make you tough and make you a gangster? And where does that ignorance come from? And why do they think every YouTuber is soft? <laughs> now, you know what it is? Like, when a lot of these cats, they front. You see what I'm saying? They, they front. What it is is that front, big I'm the street nigga that made it like I brought a different energy to YouTube. And no matter what these niggas say, they all watching. They tell yeah. you, oh, I don't watch you. Now, they they watch, all watching. Watch, oh, and the thing about watch. it is niggas don't like being put on a hot seat. When I see some sucker shit, I call it no matter who it is. And they right. ain't used to that. Like people be sitting up there making videos or a song. He pick and choose is better. You right, I pick and choose. I, I Like, if I say your name, you got to be somebody. Right. I don't really like beefing with lames. Right. But we're not, like, in the music industry, nobody has never brought the energy that I'm bringing to these street niggas on YouTube. Unless it was somebody like a Wendy Williams like that didn't get, she didn't give a fuck. But with me, I'm a street nigga now calling niggas out and, do, and dudes don't like that. I was the first one that sat up there and said Takashi 6 9 is not like that. And niggas was like, yo, you a hater. You a hater. Like, no, I can't do the little nigga. I yeah, I was, that, like, man. Yeah. I was the that, man. And I was the first one that predicted that he was going to crash. I sat up there and called the situation. I was the first one to predict. I told niggas, King Vaughn is going to be next after FBG Duck because I can see the energy. Not because I wish that. Casting over two times. It's like you can see when a nigga about to hit a brick wall. You can yeah. see it. Yeah, definitely. And when you're on the streets, you recognize certain shit. Like, dudes don't like to be called out on their shit. I'm the one that made everybody look at Jim Jones like, yo, what's going on with this nigga Jimmy? Jimmy a rat. I'm the one that really, really made people start saying something ain't right about Jimmy. Now, don't get me wrong. 50 was the first one to sit up there and say, oh, this something wasn't right. But I was saying it along the same time, too. You see what I'm saying? Like, even with casting over two times, when that paperwork came out, I don't know if the paperwork was real, but when the casters do put the paperwork out, 
And I called on casting over two times out. Immediately, he hit me on the phone. Y'all be surprised how many celebrities actually done reached out through some channel to speak to me on the phone behind something that I said or because they just don't want me to say something about them because they scared. Of course, of course. And this is why this is why these dudes got this little puppet guy speaking out to change the narrative of certain guys. I mean, certain situations. But he don't hold, I mean, like, like I said, I don't even know. I guess you gave him more light, you know, than he ever had probably or whenever he's with, like, I guess, with the rapper dudes. You said, you know, I mean, like, I never even... Who's really, who you talking about? Trav guy. Well, you know what? At the end of the day, like with Trav, it's like, like what I said, I stand by what I say. I don't want no beef with Trav, but at the same time, like, if all this gorilla shit niggas be talking, like, like sometimes I just really, really feel like, stop it. Nigga, if you really, really that tough, and yeah, that tough, go break, go break Trey, Trey way out of jail. That's why I said, when I said, like, ha half these niggas either got pressure put on them or taught by a world or Rod Diggs. Yeah. Is this, is it, half these niggas that got, they done, done had a problem with world or Rod Diggs, stop picking and choosing your battles. Yeah, what you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you yeah, think you just gonna yeah, run through the YouTuber? Yeah, yeah man, free like, world. Come on, man. Yeah, man, for the boy, man, like Rod Diggs, dog Mano, brother. He had Mano scared the ducks out here, man. And that ain't no fake shit. My right, well, look, we ain't gonna win. We just gonna keep that on some trending top. That's some shit that happened right, years right. and years ago. Right, Let's right. just now, keep it. I just Let's said it was, them, you know. Because he just brung Rod Diggs' name up. And like he said, man, you know, during some course of time, you know, these figures had these so called image, image apostles guys now. Portraying they something that these niggas is not the they not with the bullshit, bro. Now in closing, do you think this is one of my last questions, man? Well, it is my last question now. Do you think that whack might be creating invisible enemies and vice versa? And has he become has he did he do it on purpose? I'm not sure, but has he become a character along with the rest of the guys? And is he using that as a way to create income? Because you see that the way that it worked for Takashi, you know, oh. shock value sells. So oh. has WAC 100 become the modern day Howard Stern or, you know what I mean? Like, no, he is can't that be, the play? He can't be the modern day Howard Stern, but what he can be is an opportunist that he plotted on that ever since Takashi was in jail. Whatever he could get his hands on, whether it's going to make him look bad or good, he ain't, he don't care. What's your, what's your take on it, Haas? You know what killed me, man? I'm gonna I'm 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 tell you what kills me about niggas, right? We can sell crack to our next door neighbor, stick up each other, but niggas want to sit up there and tell you, don't gossip. That's the lesser of the fucking evil. If a nigga blogger, it's cool for Charlemagne and Funkmaster Flex to get on the radio and gossip, but when another nigga want to sit up there, and what, like, I personally don't have a problem with. Whack 100 sit up there telling Takashi 6 9 you're not a gangster. Because that's the only really did. You see what I'm saying? Like, everybody right now that had a taste of COVID and realized that their money got slowed down, so everybody's coming over to the internet. Niggas that normally wouldn't communicate back and forth or wouldn't even be on YouTube or Instagram like that is doing lives now because they're starting to realize that there's actually some bread in this. So everybody's mad at Whack. Because he's a blood that did an interview with a dude that should have never been in the wet. Snow Billy was one of the first ones that said it. Yo, he told niggas to, to keep on Takashi out of that game. Should have just let him do his music. Everybody knew that boy should have never been in that hey, lifestyle. Hey, you hear me? You hear me? This is why now I don't feel sorry for not near one of these dudes, man. When they was given the knowledge of how to maneuver with the situation, they did other. So now... They got a yeah. feeling. No, it's crazy. You know what? These guys was worthless from the door. And I say this to my brother all the time. I regret not being able to sell all them dudes somewhere. I should have put all of them in a U-Haul truck and sold them off to another country. <laughs> what you said, huh? So it's crazy because I listened to the nigga Trev say that Takashi 6 9 was smarter than all of them and he manipulated them. I'm like, are you kidding me? You, you know want to tell me that Takashi Six Nine manipulated them grown ass men? They did. If they, if he did, and he was that smart and he was that dumb, they deserve it. If Takashi Six Nine would have came home, 
and became Danny and said, yo, you know what? Y'all right. I'm not this thug dude. I got caught up in a lifestyle. And he would have went in a straight path. He would have been a hero. Because the reality of it is you had an innocent kid get kidnapped by the fucking streets and get corrupted. Now it's, 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 it's just like he's out here at loss because he can't leave the gangster persona alone. And he keeps stirring the fucking pot of evil, not realizing that sooner or later his luck going to run out. Or it's like I said before, personally, I, I said it before and I'm going to say it again. I personally think that Takashi's going to go back into witness protection. They're going to stage a hit on that boy, fake his death, and he's going to have to go back into witness protection. He's going to have to because he's not selling no more. He's still doing shows, but eventually he's going to die down because his music is not being played. And, and, and behind closed doors, man, Takashi, and I'm not saying this to be funny, behind closed doors, fuck all the cameras and mics, he's a very timid young man. Very timid. Very timid. Very soft spoken. He's not nothing what he portrays to be when the camera come on. Right. So being that said, when the cameras and the, the TVs know that go off, he's left with, I don't want to be in a worse situation. So he might have to make a decision and take a high route because eventually, like you said, it's dying down. He's on life support. But I said that in my No Jumper interview. He's on life support. He's struggling right now. It's like he got COVID. He's gasping. He's gasping. And all the food he got right now is damn near breaking up. It's like whack. Hassan, I appreciate your time, my brother. I know you got some some some, some pressing issues you got to tend to. Snow, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, that's happening. You know, but um, anything you guys want to say in closing before we get out of here? Yeah, definitely. I just want to address the situation. You know, um, if you don't know about this Treyway case and indictment, man, and you want to learn about it, reach out to those that's involved with it. And don't take it on upon yourself to speak on situations that you don't have no in-depth knowledge on. Because certain situations, you know, that dealt with blood being shed and a lot of money lost, it people take a different effect as myself. You know what I'm saying? Because that's my situation. So I got shot in my head and neck over that situation. So it's a little different, you know, hearing it from somebody else's mouth that wasn't even around when certain things was taking place. So, you know, that's what I want to say. And, um, you know, I'm running with the whole three straight lanes, go straight, stay straight, keep straight, average youth. End of the day, I'm going to use my platform and my voice to try to save one kid if I can't save them all, man. You know, because I definitely, I definitely, um, you know, there's so much, there's so much damage in my life, man. And um, I ain't going to feel comfortable until I know I saved the fuel them for destruct from destruction. You know what I'm saying? Awesome. I'm going to tell dudes like this, man. Live life as if you're on the run and stay dangerous at the same time. You know, we living in a day and a time where these young boys, they tell you, like, in my generation, people used to tell you to be safe. Now they tell you stay dangerous because the yeah. reality of it is in, in the <laughs> black community, it's hunting season. So you avoid it if you can. Live life as if you want to run because a nigga will trick you out of your freedom. They'll push your button and play you like you saw. And then when you crack a nigga cranium, now the worst people, niggas got to understand, son, the worst feeling in the world is when you actually, you 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 don't put the work in now. And at any given day and time, the police is getting ready to knock when you're doing. You know they coming. They right. running around with your picture. You know they coming. And see, niggas don't understand that that first 48, when the police come looking for you, when they knocking on doors and it's like you running out of places to go, it don't be worth it. So live life as if you're on a run, but stay dangerous at the same time because it ain't nothing. It, it don't make you soft to avoid the drama. But when your back is against the wall and it got to be you or them, you made the best man win. Yeah, there you have it. There you That's have right. it. Yeah, one you know, more thing. What's, what's up? Thing. What's up? What's up with it? Listen, man. And for the youth that's watching this, if I come across this, man, letting these entertainers direct your future, man. Stop letting these entertainers direct your future. Because trust me, when it's just you, 
and the medical examiner, or just you and your attorney, you ain't even gonna never think about these other guys, man. You know what I tell dudes all the time? That I see Jim Jones is a perfect example. Him and Jeezy. Jeezy told niggas to trap or die when his child graduated from college. Jim Jones put a video up with his what his kid chilling with white kids on a on a lake house, on a beach house on at a lake, and on um, jet skis and talking proper. Like he saves his children from the gangster persona that he pushes on our children. Oh, and that's one of the oh. main reasons why I don't like Jimmy. Love his music, but don't like what right. he's doing. Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. Yo, you know, it's, it, the one thing that I do respect about Jay-Z is the fact that you will never see Jay-Z in the hood rolling dice, hanging out with Shooter and Beanie Siegel like it's all good. He done elevated. Jim Jones is living a, 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 a living a different lifestyle on a different level. So why every time you get in front of the camera, you showing us ignorant nigga shit? Yeah, he's, a, he's a 45-year-old man with a brain of a 26-year-old. You know what? I would, like, I, I agree, but don't agree at the same time because the, the way he raised his son shows that he's smarter than what right. he's showing us because his son is proper. And when mm. even when he talked to his son, when I seen the video, the way he talked to his son... You don't even hear the gangster no more. It's, it, 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 it's Papa, Papa. Like, hold up. So you you mean to tell me you got a soft side? You got a loving side that you never show to our children? You just right. show them. You just show our kids murder, death, kill. That's why I'm not feeling feeling Jimmy right. because right. this is what he this is what he pushes. And right. even still, like, yo, don't you think you did enough? Your wiretap is what led Mel to jail. So now you got Mel on another fucking phone call, which is probably another wiretap, basically talking shit to whack. Nigga, yeah. you could have said that to whack yourself. Right, 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 right. And that was so, and I just want to say, that was so corny of Jim Jones, man. That remind me of, you had to run to the second classroom and get your big sister to fight your battles in the yard. Yo, right. there you have it, man. There you have it. It's a lot going on. It's a lot going on, man. But we're going to get out of here. I'm going to say for sure, man. I appreciate you guys' time once again. Right. And yeah. we're going to get out of here in peace and one love from the whole Info My yeah. team, man. Y'all be safe out there. Be know smart. Know how be smart, man. And don't get out your spot by these rap. Yeah, yeah. One love. Love. <laughs>